In rehearsal and performance, uh, someone jokingly said, go up and see Eddie Murphy. So we did. Uh, and Fred went up to the dressing room door, knocked on the door, and the door opened, and there was Eddie Murphy. He saw Fred and went back, and then gave him a big hug and said, the real Mr. Rogers. And someone, the cast member, I think, took this Polaroid that day, the historic meeting, the real Mr. Rogers and Mr. Robinson. <laughs> I always saw a real affection in those spoofs. Tom Shales is the Pulitzer Prize winning TV critic at the Washington Post. Oh, uh, seems perfectly healthy and, and in a way it's an honor, you know, it, it shows that he's become a real institution in not just in American television but in America. I don't think anyone lampoons or satirizes that which is unimportant because it won't get the audience and it won't get the laughs. It's got to be an institution or really important before you do that. So it's a great compliment to Fred. Fred Rogers became such an American institution that he was asked to donate a sweater to the Smithsonian. These sweaters were all made by my mother, and I think she would be very pleased today. Because Mr. Rogers and his neighborhood were so respected, it's not surprising that famous visitors dropped in, including many great artists. Quentin, it's Fred Rogers. Oh, I know you are. I grew up watching your television show. Oh, well, I'm very glad to meet you. I'm a big fan of yours. I'd like you to know my television neighbor, Quentin Marsalis. How you doing? I saw him one day with Yo-Yo Ma, and, uh, you know, Yo-Yo Ma should be on TV more often. Well, here he was on Mr. Rogers, and, uh, and uh, he has opera people come on and stuff like that. Uh, it's like a, it's a cultural event. It's not just a show. Play that, and uh, there are just many, many moods. And this was obviously some a very peaceful, tranquil mood. Did you ever play uh, when you were really angry? Sure. And I, I, there's one piece I know that I love to get into was this piece. I've written a song called "What Do You Do with the Mad That You Feel When You Feel So Mad You Could Bite." when the whole wide world seems oh so wrong and nothing you do seems very what right. Do what do, do you do? Do you, do you punch a bag? A bag? Do, you do you pound some, some clay or, or some, some dough? dough? Do you round up friends for a game of tag and see how fast you go? It's great to be able to stop when you've planned a thing that's wrong and be able to do something else instead and think this song I can stop when I want to can stop when I wish can stop 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 anytime that and very good, good feeling, feeling of control like this, of being you know the scariest thing in the world is to feel out of control and to realize that you you don't have any choice that is very scary feeling Mr. Rogers always paid attention to children's feelings. He helped kids understand the complexities of challenges like moving to a new house or dealing with physical disabilities, even thinking about death, which he dealt with in a memorable program when one of his fish died. They tend to believe what they see. They believe the stories, they believe the fairy tales, and they believe that really um, scary animation um, until, until they get old enough. In the neighborhood of Maple Mr. Rogers helps you deal with, with, with the real world as separated from the world of make-believe. When you go through that tunnel, that's the world of make-believe, and I really think that kids understand that these are puppets, that this is not like the part of the program where Mr. Rogers is talking to you. And, um, and I think that that may help them deal with some of the rest of television, too. Dr. T. Barry Brazelton is a pediatrician and author of many books on child care. So fantasy for a three, four, and five-year-old is a very critical part of their um, learning about themselves, learning about the world, testing things out safely. You know something, Lady Aberlin? And although the neighborhood of make-believe is fantasy, the puppets sometimes grapple with genuine problems and fears the children may understand. What is it? 
been wondering if I was a mistake. If you were a mistake? <laughs> what do you mean, Daniel? Well, for one thing, I've never seen a tiger that looks like me. No. And I've never heard a tiger that talks like me. When a puppet or other character is troubled by doubts like this, Mr. Rogers helped young viewers understand the very real feelings involved, and he reassured them simply and directly. Daniel was wondering if he was a mistake because he didn't look or sound like any other tiger that he knew. Well, all tigers are different, just like all people are different. And there is no person in this whole world who is a mistake, no matter how different that person may seem. Each person is fine. At the center of it all is this trust that, uh, that, that viewers, young viewers, place in him. And I think part of that trust is the idea that he's not just fooling, he's, he's really essentially the way he is, that his philosophy comes through in his actions and words. This is not just a role he's playing or, you know, something that someone hired him to do. It's a real mission, I think, for him. I'd like kids to know that they have a lot of choices. In fact, on The Neighborhood, I think that we offer a smorgasbord of ways of saying how you feel and who you are. And I'd just like, you know, puppetry and music might be my ways, but it might not be for some kid, uh, dancing or... Uh, or photography, or welding. Who, who knows what it might be for some kid, but I'd like to show them a whole lot of ways of expressing who they are and how they feel. I think that's part of our job. Fred has made uh, emotions okay for small children, and I think he's opened up the whole area of affective development, emotional development, to parents and children. Because if parents watch with their children and then pick up on whatever comes out of the program as a way of communicating with their child, they have a rare opportunity to uh, join the child in their reactions to Mr. Rogers' program. So he's really brought uh, affect or emotional development to the surface as a safe area for parents and children to share between the ages of three and six, which is a major gift. I usually turn it on for a few minutes and just watch myself. And if the kids are in the room, they'll say, Mr. Rogers, and we'll sit down and watch it for a few minutes. Because Fred's kind of like a friend of the family, I guess. He's there for those, those hurdles, those first hurdles that, that are hard to get over, I think. The little things that are tough. My favorite song is Everybody's Fancy, Everybody's Fine. Your body's fancy, and so is mine. <laughs> uh, well, I definitely like make believe. That's that's very always an important part for them. And they also also like this the change of uh, a change of sceneries, the different characters, and the different houses and locations where they go. Things they where they go, what they learn. He teaches children a lot, and uh, he had one segment on about going to the doctor's office. So we learned a lot about that, and it helped a lot. Fred Rogers delighted and helped families with more than 900 episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. His gentle manner, his wisdom, and his daily TV visits influenced millions of lives in ways that would be impossible to document. 